Okay guys, I just got back from watching Chernobyl Die Reason. I'm so scared right now. Man, this movie, this is a classic case of just wasted potential. This movie started off so good and then just went right off a damn cliff. Um, it started off great and I thought this movie's going to be good and nothing happened. Um, it could have been so much better. And I just left this movie feeling really disappointed. Um, so just based on that alone, I can't recommend this. If you wait until it's on DVD and you go get it at a red box for like a dollar, watch it then. But do not go pay theater price to watch this movie because it just wasn't worth it. It didn't deliver. Um, it's supposed to be about, well, I'm going to go ahead and start with the spoilers now. So if you don't want to know what happens stop now but yeah um, so the movie starts off and you have this guy his uh, girlfriend he wants to propose to they're in Europe they're visiting his brother Paul um, and he wants oh and uh, his girlfriend's friend I think her name was Amanda so the four of them are visiting his brother or the three of them are visiting his brother, and they're in Europe, and they want to do something exciting, so he decides that they're going to go on what they call an extreme tour of Chernobyl. He met this guy, Yuri, um, who gives tours up there. So they go to meet this guy. They're going to go on the tour. These other people join them. Uh, this other guy, I think his name was Michael, and his girlfriend, Zoe, uh, who he calls his little Viking, which reminded me of Pete and Pete with Artie, my little Viking, but um, so anyway, so they go up to Chernobyl, and they can't get in, the guards are stationed there, and Yuri doesn't know what's going on, he says they're never up here, so the people start complaining, oh, we paid for this tour, we better get in, so Yuri goes around a back way, he sneaks them in, everything's cool still, they go to Chernobyl, um, they explore the area a little bit, they go up to the apartments where people lived, and there's kind of a scene where I think Yuri used to live in this apartment, but nothing ever happens with that. So it's irrelevant. And they turn to leave, and you hear a noise. And it turns out it's a big-ass bear charging down the hallway. So they get out of the way, and they decide they're going to leave. They get back to the van, and something has chewed through the wires. So they can't leave. So then it gets dark. Yuri's called for help. Um, no one's coming, he can't get a signal, none of the cell phones get signals, so he decides he's going to leave and I guess walk 13 miles to the guard tower. He does have a gun. So this other kid, I think his name was Chris, Paul's little brother, he decides he's going to go with him, he's kind of the level-headed one, Paul's always getting him into trouble and situations. He's like, you know what Paul, you've screwed things up enough, I'm going with Yuri. He takes off, we hear gunshots go off. Um, Paul takes off, he brings Chris back, his legs all torn up, and then these just wild dogs start attacking the van. Uh, they eventually leave, and then it's daylight. So there's all types of stuff in this movie that's just trying to kill them. These radioactive fish, uh, packs of wild dogs, constant radiation threats. They have a little monitor that tells them when radiation is getting too um, high in the area and just all types of stuff that's trying to kill them. They can't find Yuri. So Paul and Michael, since Chris is useless at this point, they decide to go look for Yuri because he had a gun, he knows the way out, and you know, you can't just leave him out there. So they go to find him and they, they sneak down into this area. They find his body, it's torn to shreds, and then something attacks, they hide, and we don't see what it is. We never clearly see what it is. These monsters, it's like the hills have eyes. They're radioactive, deformed people who I guess eat other people, and we never clearly see them until the very, very end of the movie, and even then it's just for a brief second. So it's really, you're never going to get to really see the monsters here. Another disappointing feature. So they go back, and they find Yuri, they see this thing eating, they get back to the van, they're like, we got to get the hell out of here now. They try to get Chris up, he can't walk. So Chris, his fiance, stay behind. They decide, hey, we're going to go. We'll walk for help, and we'll come back for you. They leave a walkie-talkie. They have communication. On the way, they find a parking lot full of cars, a bus that's been 
shot out from the inside. Someone stayed in there, a guard, and just shot a bunch of holes to the outside. So something was attacking him. And looking through a van, they find a similar van, and they get the cords. So they radio back. Everything's fine. They say, we're on our way back. They get chased by wild dogs. They fall in a river full of contaminated fish, all types of crazy shit. They finally get back to the van, and the van's gone. They find it um, a couple blocks away, tipped over. Natalie and Chris are gone. So they follow a trail of blood, and they eventually... We never find Chris's body. He's just gone from this point on. But they do find Natalie in this like abandoned building. So they try and get her out. They rescue her. And then as they're walking around, uh, they see a little girl. And while they're distracted by her, she never turns around or anything. So we never see her face. We just see the back of a little girl. So they go and they're talking to her, trying to communicate. Meanwhile, Natalie gets kidnapped again by the monster. She's sitting right next to a staircase and then something just grabs her. So they all take off. They're running. We still got Zoe, Michael, Paul, and Amanda. They take off running and then we see like all these figures, people watching, slowly starting to come towards them. Kind of like zombies. They act like zombies. So they take off into like this little bunker area and they're just running from place to place the entire time. Radiation goes up, it goes down. Uh, they're just running in circles. <clears throat> so they get to like this factory, the reactor where the explosion happened. They're still running. They block themselves in. Michael can't get in in time, so he's attacked by the monsters. They just drag him off screen. Um, they continue running. They try and climb up a ladder. Uh, Zoe gets pulled down. She's gone. Um, they find like this little area where the monsters live and we see like a little tiny one crawling at him like he has no legs or something and that was pretty cool but once again you don't really see the faces it's a lot of shadows this movie was filmed certain scenes of the movie were filmed like there was another person with them just filming everything moving the camera back and forth like when they get to a hallway he's just looking in both directions so it's just Amanda and Paul at this point and they're running through the factory. The radiation is off the charts. They can't see. Their skin is burning. It's peeling. They eventually get outside of the reactor, and there's guards, these Russian guards. Uh, they tell them to stop or they'll shoot. Paul, who actually speaks the language, um, or Ukrainian, he continues to go forward, despite them telling him to stop, which he does understand, but he keeps walking, so they shoot him. Amanda falls on his body, and she's just freaking out. She wakes up and she's being uh, tended to by these doctors in hazmat suits. And they're saying something about the patients escaped. Did we get the patients? And the other guy says, yeah, we got the patients. They're speaking in their language. So Amanda doesn't know what they're talking about. But they say, yeah, we got the patients. We got all of them. He says, what about the Americans? And he says, they're all dead except this one. And so the doctor says, well, we can't let her go. So they put her in a room, they lock the door, and it's a dark room. You know what the hell's going to happen. She says hello, and then all the monsters swarm her. Movie ends. Um, that was it. Uh, like I said, you get to see a little glimpse of their faces at the very end, but it was just a lot of nothing happening. Um, it started off, I'm just so disappointed because it started off so good, and I was looking forward to this movie. I heard it was going to be kind of like Hills Have Eyes, maybe with a Cloverfield twist. I thought that sounded awesome. Just didn't deliver. Yuri was a really likable character. The rest of them, not so much. Actually, Michael and his girlfriend Zoe were really likable too. But yes, if you guys are thinking about going to see this movie, um, I, my personal opinion, if you want to go see it, go see it. My personal opinion, I would wait for the DVD. So, leave your thoughts on this video in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I know I say that in every video, but thank you guys so much for subscribing. Um, I really do appreciate it. So, that's it guys. I will be back um, probably tomorrow with another video. And definitely Ring of Honor TV review for tomorrow night. So, that's it guys. Thanks for watching.